Welcome to Biology 160, Introduction to Anatomy and Physi Physiology, we're talking about the reproductive system. In this part of the lecture, we're going to be talking about the female reproductive system. The main parts of the female re reproductive system are as follows. First of all, we have the ovaries. The ovaries are where the eggs, or the ova, are produced. So the function of the female reproductive system is the the counterpart to the male reproductive system where sperm are produced. In the female reproductive system, the eggs are, are produced. And together, the sperm and egg come together to form a zygote or the new, the new uh, baby, the new human. That is, so this is the most important part of the female reproductive system where the eggs happen. But the rest of the system here is uh, accessory in order to um, have those eggs become fertilized. So we have the duct system. It's a duct system similar to uh, the one that we saw in the male reproductive system, but it's but uh, it's made up of the uterine tubes or the fallopian tubes, which you've probably heard of before. There's the uterus, and then there's the vagina. Then there's also the external gen genitalia of the female uh, anatomy that function in reproduction as well. So we can see the main parts here. So if we're looking at the side of a female, if we were to cut that, do a sagittal section here, we'd see, starting from the, from the outside in, we have the external genitalia of the female, and then we have the vagina, which leads to the uterus, which leads to the fallopian tubes, which then lead to the ovary. The ovary is an almond-shaped organ, but it's about twice the size of an almond, and this is where the eggs are initially produced, and then this is where they're released. The eggs are going to move down through this fallopian tube to the uterus, and that's where the, if fertilization occurs, the uterus is where the baby implants, and is going to begin development during the pregnancy. The vagina is simply a transport for two reasons. It's a transport passageway, first for the sperm to enter the reproductive tract of the female, and then second of all for the baby once pregnancy is ended, to exit the female anatomy. Here is, the, here is an ovary, and within this ovary, this is where the, the egg production begins, the, mature, the maturation of the eggs that are released the, for fertilization. When a female is born, she basically has all of the cells, all of the primary uh, cells that can eventually become eggs, and she and a female will have about two million cells, um, which which can possibly become eggs, which is that's a huge number. If you think if you were to calculate out how many <clears throat> eggs a female could possibly release over her lifetime, say she goes through puberty at maybe uh, twelve or thirteen, and then let's say she goes through menopause at around let's just say forty, let's say ten to forty, because maybe easier years to to do there. So we've got, let's say that you're, you go through puberty at 10, you end puberty, I mean, you go through menopause at 40. So you have a 30 year span where you're actively releasing eggs. And assuming that you don't, you're never pregnant, you'd release exactly 12 eggs a year. So that's roughly just a little bit more than 300 eggs. And, you, and again, you have about 2 million. And then if you add in pregnancy where you're taking out nine months of that, a female really doesn't use all of those eggs that are that she possibly could. So she has a lot of extra, and that, and that may be evolutionary, evolutionarily allow to make sure that there are enough plus extra. So, um, but inside the ovary, the ovary is made up of these things called follicles, and a follicle is made up of an ova and follicular cells. These follicles are, are kind of like a little sac-like structure that holds the egg inside. So here's the primary follicle over here. The ova is on the inside of the follicle, and then the cells surrounding producing the follicle, they're separate from the egg, and they're actually not going to be released. So you can see as the egg develops, it moves along here. As the follicle develops, at this point we have the 
ova, the egg in the middle, then we have these follicle cells surrounding that as it's maturing and it's getting ready to be released. So we'll look later about the menstrual cycle, but basically in the menstrual cycle, this is what's going on as the egg is being prepared to, to be released. It's going through this cycle. And then finally, we have the actual ovulation which happens once a month if the female's not pregnant from puberty until menopause, where a mature ova is released from the ovary. Then notice that the follicle cells, they don't degenerate immediately. They become something called the corpus uh, luteum. The corpus luteum is going to become important when we look at pregnancy. If this egg is fertilized, then the corpus luteum is going to start producing um, hormones that tell the body that fertilization has happened, implantation, pregnancy has begun. And so it has, a, it has a further function. If fertilization does not happen, this egg is going to be released, the corpus luteum is going to degenerate, and then the menstruous is going to happen as the, the wall of the uterus is, is sloughed off to prepare for the next month's ovulation. Here's another view of the, the female anatomy. And we're looking here at, uh, from the back, and we can see the ovaries, the ovaries are attached, so they're not just free-floating. They are attached to the, the body wall, so they're held in place. Here we can see the fallopian tubes. We're now going to focus on the duct system, consisting of the fallopian tubes, the uterus, and then the vagina. Notice that the fallopian tubes are not directly connected to the ovary. So there's these finger-like projections on the end of the fallopian tubes, but they're not. it's not continuous with the ovary. So when the egg is released, it has to enter the fallopian tubes. And the, the job of these appendages is to create a kind of a current that pulls the, tries to pull the ovary into the fallopian tubes, this connection. Sometimes the released ova doesn't make it into the fallopian tubes, and it can end up in, in the abdominal cavity, which can, can be a problem. Not always, but it could lead to infections and different things like that. So the, the ova has to make it into the fallopian tube, and then it's going to travel down the fallopian tube into the uterus. It's within the fallopian tube that fertilization occurs. So as the male anatomy, as the sperm is released into the vagina, and it has to travel through the uterus, and then up into the fallopian tube, and this is where fertilization happens. If fertilization happens, that egg is then going to travel into the uterus, it's going to um, embed in the, uter the uterine wall, and pregnancy will be initiated. Here are some of the parts of the fallopian tubes. We have the fem fimbriae, and this is the name for those finger-like projections on the end of the, uh, the fallopian tubes, and they're the ones that grab the, the oocyte and the ovary. Within the, within the fallopian tubes are also cilia along the edges of the cells, and the cilia are little hair-like projections, and their job is to move the oocyte down along um, the fallopian tube to where fertilization can happen. Notice here it takes about three to four days for that ova, that egg, to move down the fallopian tubes and make it to the uterus. That's a pretty long time. It's not a very long distance, but this is kind of a slow-moving system. The oocyte lives about 24 hours, and so because it only lives 24 hours, fertilization has to happen within the fallopian tubes. Um, but there's a little window of time. So when that ova is released, there's a 24-hour window of time when that fertilization has to occur before the oocyte is no longer able to be fertilized. The sperm, though, they also have a, a window of time as well. So sperm, are not they can only live between 24 to 48 hours within the, um, the female reproductive tract. And so altogether, we have a, a maybe 36-hour window 36 to 48, maybe a little bit more, maybe up to to three-day window when fertilization has to happen. So the egg being released, the sperm being released, and then coming together all has to be uh, coordinated in order for this to, to lead to um, fertilization. The uterus comes after the fallopian tubes, and its job is to receive that fertilized egg and it's, it, it keeps the fertilized egg during pregnancy as it grows and develops, and it nourishes that fertilized egg. So internal um, nourishment given by the mother. It's located, located between the urinary bladder and the rectum, inside the abdominal cavity of the female.
the uterus has a few different regions. We have the body, which is the main por- portion. We have the fundus, which is the uh, where the fallopian tube enters into the uterus. And then we have the cer- cervix. So if we go back to this picture here, you can see the parts of the, the uterus. Here's the cervix. And if you've heard of things like cervical cancer, or if you've ever been pre- pregnant, they'll talk about the, the thinning of the cervix and the dilation. That's the cervix here. Then we have the body of the uterus. And then the fundus, where the fallopian tubes enter in to the system. The walls of the uterus are, are very interesting. They, they are very muscular. There's the three layers that we've seen before. But in this case, they're called metrium. So we have endometrium, which means the inside. And the endometrium is specialized because it allows for the fertilized egg to implant within that endometrium. That is where um, pregnancy is going to occur. If there is no pregnancy, the endometrium is what is, is uh, sloughed off each month during menstruation. That, that becomes the, the menses. Then we have the myometrium. Myo meaning muscle. Myometrium, this is the smooth muscle layer, layer of the uterus. The uterus is not voluntary. It works involuntarily, and it works by means of the, the smooth muscle there. And then there's the parametrium, which is also a visceral layer of the peritoneum, and this is the outermost layer of the, the uterus. So those are the parts of the uterus. We're now going to look at the um, external anatomy of the female. And here are the parts, the external uh, genitalia, or the vulva of the female. We have the mons, the mons pubis, the labia, the clit, uh, clitoris, the urethral orifice, vaginal orifice, and greater vestibular glands. So here's a picture looking at the external genitalia of the female. And you can see all the parts of the anatomy here. So the mons pubis is is a fatty area overlying the the pubic symphysis, which is the, the pubic bone. And this is where, after puberty, you have pubic hair located. We have the, the labia majora, which are the skin folds around... Um, the external opening to the female anatomy. We have the labia majora and the labia minora. And you can see them. I'll point them out here. So here's the labia minora. See, it's kind of the inner folds. And then we have the labia majora, which are the outer folds. And they may be, they will be covered with um, pubic hair as well. And they're the larger skin folds. We then have the vestibules here and that is where the opening the to the vagina is found so in the vestibules uh, we have the vaginal orifice located and then we have the greater vestibular glands as well that are located here the vestibular glands release lubricant during sex- sexual intercourse to allow that to happen. Next, there is the clitoris, and you can see where this is located here, um, in front of the urethral orifice, which is in front of the vaginal orifice. And I guess this is a good point to, time to point out the where the urethra comes out. So in the in the male, the urethra and the um, reproductive system, the urinary system, reproductive system, have a common opening. In the female, we have the the vagina here, vaginal opening here, which is a reproductive, and we have the uh, urethra coming off in front. And in front of that, we have the clitoris. And a little bit about this is it, it actually contains erectile tissue, and is homologous with the the male penis. And it's it's uh, similar in a number of ways. First, because it has a a hooded prepuce and in a male, this is often when when someone has um, circumc- circumcision. This is what is removed. This is the foreskin that is removed from from the penis, and so the uh, the female also has this as well. Sensitive erect- erectile tissue, and it be- also becomes swollen with blood during sexual in- excitement. And fo- finally, we have an area that's simply called the perineum, and it's a diamond-shaped area that encloses all of the all of these parts that we've just seen, all of the external female anatomy. 
We're now going to talk a little bit about the production of eggs. For the males, we talked about spermatogenesis. In the females, we're going to talk about something called oogenesis. And I, I want to point out here that the two O's, whenever you see two O's together, that's going to signify something to do with an egg. And we don't say it oogenesis, it's, it's oogenesis. And so this is a production of eggs. We have oogonia, which are female stem cells, which uh, correlate with spermatogonia that we saw in, in, the, in the males. And the oogonia undergo mitosis to produce more oogonia, and then also to produce primary oocytes. O meaning egg, and site meaning cell. So these are the, the actual eggs. The primary oocytes are then going to go through meiosis to produce the mature egg with half the number of chromosomes. So primary oocytes still have 46 chromosomes, and they have to go through meiosis to produce, produce an egg cell that only has 23 chromosomes, which can then come together with the sperm, which also has 23 chromosomes, to, pr to produce that total 46 chromosomes. Primary oocytes are inactive until puberty. So all of this we've talked about so far is happening before birth. So when a female is, is born, all the oogonia are gone, and all she's left with are these primary oocytes, which are then going to, um, once puberty, puberty begins, they're going to be um, released once a month. And again, we see this hormone FSH coming into play, and that is the, the follicle-stimulating hormone that encourages the release of or the maturation of a follicle each month, month to undergo the ovarian cycle. Meiosis starts inside the maturing follicle, and we're going to produce a secondary oocyte. So the primary oocyte has 46 chromosomes. The secondary oocyte then has 23 chromosomes, and we've gone through a cell division. So we have one primary oocyte divides into two secondary oocytes, and then the secondary oocyte, each of them will each divide and produce four um, cells, but we'll, we'll look at how that works in, in a minute here. Follicle development takes about 14 days, and so as you notice, this is part of the ovarian cycle, and ovulation occurs by the LH, or the luteinizing hormone, a surge in luteinizing hormone which causes the release of those cells. Now this is where oogenesis is different than spermatogenesis. So remember with spermatogenesis, we started with one cell and we ended up with four sperm cells. In oogenesis, this is different. We start with one cell and we end up with only one egg cell. Same number of divisions, same number of splitting of chromosomes, but in the case of a, an egg cell, only one of the cells that is, is uh, created is going to go on to become the egg cell. Um, because what we do is we end up with what are called two polar bodies. So we start with one cell. As the cell divides, we end up with one cell that becomes a secondary oocyte, and a second cell is much smaller, and that one will become the polar body, which, which will generally just uh, degenerate and be reabsorbed by the female's body. Another thing that's different between oogenesis and spermatogenesis is that meiosis only ha only finishes if uh, sperm fertilizes that egg. So in you remember in spermatogenesis you start with one sperm, it goes clear through meiosis to end up with four sperm cells. In oogenesis we stop at this point right here after the first cell division and the second cell division where this egg is going to divide into a polar body and the mature egg will not happen until um, fertilization or the sperm cell fertilizes that egg. Meaning that if fertilization does not occur this egg cell, the secondary oocyte is never going to complete meiosis. So here you can see some further differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So in meiosis in males, we produce four functional sperm for every one cell that goes in. In females, we only produce one functional ovum for, and uh, three polar bodies as we, as we go through this. So we only end up with one. And they're very different because, as I talked about before, the sperm just basically have DNA 
and equipment to get the DNA to the to the egg. The egg, on the other on the other hand, is very large. It it doesn't have any way of getting around. It doesn't have flagella, and it has a lot of nutrients in that egg because that's those nutrients are going to be used in order to uh, be used by the developing zygote and then and then embryo and fetus. So here's a picture of how oogenesis happens. So here we have oogonium that are produced before birth and through mitosis we produce more oogonium and some of those oogonium become primary oocytes. Then this primary oocyte is going to start growing and then it's going to go through once uh, puberty begins it's going to go through development and each month one primary oocyte is going to be Release and that primary oocyte is going to start going through myto- meiosis. So notice here that we still have 2n. Remember that 2n in humans equals 46 or 46 chromosomes. So this cell still has the 46 chromosomes. And as we go through here, now meiosis is going to happen. So the first cell here, the primary oocyte, is going to divide to produce two cells. One secondary oocyte and one polar body. Now this polar body, notice it only has, it has 23 chromosomes, but it's, it's not going to be um, fertilized, so it's going to degenerate. If we look at what's happening with the follicle over here, at this point, after this first division, this is when ovulation occurs. So the secondary oocyte is released from the follicle, from the ovary, is going to be picked up by the fallopian tubes. Then if sperm are present and are able to fertilize the cell, then and only then the second division is going to happen. In the second division, um, the secondary oocyte divides again, producing a polar body and the, um, the mature ovum or egg. And now this is a fertilized egg that can then go on to implant in the uterus and go through pregnancy to develop the the new baby. So that is a look at the female anatomy and how oogenesis happens. I encourage you to look at some animations about oogenesis and spermatogenesis and meiosis and how those all work together. The other thing that we're going to talk about in this this chapter is the um, the menstrual cycle and also um, pregnancy, we'll look at that a little bit, and uh, how development happens in the fetus.